Hey YouTube, Pink Ladies T-Birds just happened to be watching some of my shit. My name is Jimmy Pink, and my mother told me never say anything bad about the dead. Only say good. John Crawford is dead. Good. So anyhow, this is the eighth and final episode of season one of you, Betty and Joan, and I'm sad, y'all, I'm sad, like, this was so good, and eight episodes wasn't enough, oh, let's go ahead and pop up, the look goes as follows, and while we're doing that, you'll excuse me if I open my penmoir a little bit. So let's get up in this gig. This episode got me in my feelings again. Spoiler alert, now get past my own mortality real quick. I'll be 39 in two weeks. I'm not going to tell y'all the details, but let's just say... Y'all hear me talk about a dude, he's a real person, but he's not, I don't know if there's a future. And this show just shows so well how it is to be an aging woman, to age out of your looks, because let's face it. Even if you're a pretty 70-year-old woman, you still don't look like a pretty 25-year-old woman. So, you know, it got me in my feels, but it was well done. I will say one thing that did kind of piss me off. So I'm sitting there, I'm watching it, and we're seeing Joan Crawford go through her shit, still taking trash parts, blase blah, etc., and I don't know if that was because we were supposed to be getting some kind of redemption storyline for her. But I looked at my phone and it said 1030. And I'm like, bitch, I ain't seen not hide nor hair of a motherfucking Betty Davis yet. And that, I will tell you, I was not here for. The Jones stuff was interesting. It was good. It was well done. As a finale, this was a fucking downer for a finale. But, at the same time, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So, I mean, this is what happened. It was a downer. Um, I do say I like the fantasy sequence. The, fan the, fa the fantasy sequence, when, like, Joan was going... And she walked in that room and it was Hedda Harper and um, Jack Warner. And they were talking and they were having a good old time. And then Joan, magically in the shot, looked like Joan with her dark hair pent up. Because as we see, they were showing the progression of age. Their hair was lighter. Um, and then Betty comes in. Now we know this is most definitely fictionalized because how do we prove that she had a hallucination that she was at a party with Hedda Harper, Jack Warner, and Betty Davis of all people. But I found something interesting. Everybody had on, it was candlelit, and everybody had these red, pink, burgundy, fuchsia hues was that like her in hell? I just thought that was an odd color choice. I mean, visually stimulating, it was gorgeous. The costuming. Hey, costumers on this show, let's go on ahead. Get that Emmy. Get that Emmy ready. But, um, shout out to uh, the costume designer on the New Edition movie, too, because these two, for me, for everything that I've seen for costume design, they're neck and neck right now. And um, the other show, 
that might come about might not as harlots um on hulu which y'all let me know comment below and let me know if y'all want me to start reviewing that even though that will not be in costume i'm not doing all that but that show is like fucking hella good anyway but i did notice i'm like why does everybody have on like red and hot pink and it's candlelit and i'm like this is this like her own personal hell because that's a weird because i felt like that moment was supposed to be like a wheel turn in her head like a re kind of a redemption in her head but instead of it being like angelic white it was like hellish colors but anyway i did like that part <clears throat> I like the part where she was talking to the twin daughter and the kids. Um, I like that we seen Betty Davis with her child um, that was mentally retarded. And she was like going to her to talk. And then the reveal, like she had got these letters from her mom. We found out earlier in the series that she felt like her mom was her only friend. Come to find out her mother was talking shit about her behind her back too. Which, let's just keep it 100 all mothers talk shit behind their kids' back. Don't believe the fucking hype. Because we as children, already, once we hit teenage years, especially as a female, you're a selfish little fucking bitch anyway. And then for you to be that level of celebrity where you're always worshipped and adored, you probably was always like that. There are studies that says that most people... Shit. And probably myself. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to just put it out there. Most people who want to be famous or present themselves out to the world, if you took like a test, they're like more higher narcissistic than other people, which you would have to be. You would have to be. Why would you put yourself fucking out there? Like, I play dress up at home. I don't got to do it in front of a motherfucking YouTube camera. So you have to be a certain level of narcissistic to do shit like this. And I couldn't imagine being on the level of a Betty Davis or a Joan Crawford. Like, yeah, you probably are narcissistic. But you would have to be or else you would suck at your job. I never realized, and I like the way the series came together at the end. Whereas we've seen these people doing these interviews for this documentary. And now, unless I missed it, did I miss it, y'all? Just comment and let me know if I missed it. But apparently they was at the Academy Awards and they were interviewing these people backstage. And it was the year, because I wasn't familiar with it. I know they kept saying 1978 and all I kept thinking was is that was my fucking year I was born. But... Did anybody know that was that they was actually at the 1978 Oscars? Because I didn't. And for it to come and you seen her talk to the um, guy shooting the documentary and was just like, oh, you want me to get on here and talk shit about John Crawford? John Crawford was a fucking professional. I'm not going to do it. A couple lines of the night. John Crawford, of all the movies I've done, you can't get it. Something else for me to sign and fucking baby chain. That was line number one. Line number two was Victor Bueno. Which that actor, I don't know who that guy is. Um, but he did an excellent job as Victor Bueno. And when he said Betty was just taking everything that she could to keep working. Because she always thought everything was going to be her last job. And... She, you know, wasn't picking and choosing anymore. She was taking everything that was offered to her. And when he said, it was like watching Miles Davis play a commercial jingle. Like, that was a perfect analogy. So I don't know if Victor Bueno actually said that. Or if that was um, Ryan Murphy's writing. But that was a fucking fantastic line. And of course, the classic line that we opened the fucking show with which is known across the world John Crawford is dead good I will say I would have liked to have seen more Susan Sarandon in this episode I feel like it was few Betty and Joan and at the end y'all made it the fucking Joan show I will say that 
Um, I would like to know, and if y'all do know, comment below and let me know. And I'm sure um, when I watch After Buzz TV, they gonna tell me. But when they were talking about like the first day on the set, and they were sitting there, and they was kikiing like girlfriends and saying, "I hope that we can be friends." If that's something that really happened. And just based on the way the show is, I'm sure at first they probably were. But like we saw, motherfuckers, that wasn't no big story for them to be friends. Like now we have, it ain't that much different. Let me quit lying. We have, oh, we love that Rihanna and Katy Perry are best friends now. We love that Taylor Swift and Katy Perry are best friends now. We love that Naomi Watts and um, what's the bitch name, Nicole Kidman, are best friends and they've known each other since kids. We love that Tobey Maguire and um, The Revenant, Urgh. what's the what's motherfucker's name, DiCaprio, are friends. We love that. But don't we love the drama more? Don't we love it a little bit more that Kim Kardashian threw motherfucking Taylor Swift under the bus? Don't we love it a little bit more When Taylor Swift puts out a song about Katy Perry and Katy Perry goes in on her. We love it. Don't we love Miley? What's good? Like, we love the drama. It's not anything fucking new. But this is the internet age where there's so much going on that you could choose to ignore it. And there's other stuff going on. You know, we talk about sub this and now. This is not new. These ladies so buck a loads of magazines and shit because of a few. But in the meantime, they also tore these women down as people. And these movie studios just made them like that. Um, I do like the part where Joan Crawford, like I said, when she was having a hallucination, where she admitted she was like Joan Crawford is somebody I created. So much so to a point. And we seen that when she was narrating for her book. Like I love being recognized. I love that. And I love the admission of. I've done this so long. And I've put on this character. And I'm always on so much. I don't know who I am by myself. And. I could relate to that. Like, it take a different person. Um, when I was doing music for my Pink Ladies and Z-Birds, y'all know I was a rapper. Um, when I was probably getting the footing that could have catapulted myself when I wasn't just local, when I was going to bigger cities and I was going out of town and performing and I was getting nominated for awards. That lifestyle wasn't for me and that, that struck a nerve with me when Joan said that. Like, she didn't know who she was. I always say, yes, y'all about to hear my government name. I always said that Jimmy Pink was doing great, but Jamaica was fucked up. And I did walk away from that. In fact, the reason why I'm just now, I've, I've been YouTube, I've been asked to be a partner like eight years ago before people started. Um, YouTube used to have to ask you to be a partner. And I was asked back then. And I said no, because this was all during this same area of my life where I'm like, I don't know who Jamaica is anymore. She's gone. And, um, yeah, I still go by the name Jimmy Pink because that was my YouTube name. It's recognizable and it fits. Um, and I have since that many years ago found the balance between Jamaica and Jimmy Pink. And Jimmy Pink is a little bit of an exaggerated Jamaica. Sometimes y'all get Jamaica. Y'all kind of get in Jamaica right now. You see, I'm not like overly hyper or anything like that. To be fair, I was trying to be in character. Um, you know, how the fuck do you talk about Joan Crawford and Betty Davis and not drink and smoke? Kind of doesn't work, does it? Um, but anyway, great season, the end. I love the end, even though that is so cliche. It's so cliche to do the, well, this is what happens to the real people. It's so cliche, but the reason why I loved it, and that's why I said, costume department, get a motherfucking Oscar. 
I mean, Emmy. Costume department. Get a motherfucking Emmy. Because when they were showing them pictures of them side by side. This whole time, I always knew Susan Sarandon kind of looked like Betty Davis. I didn't know how well they had did. But I kept saying Jessica Lange ain't look shit like John Crawford. Bullshit. Bullshit. They did that. They did that. I'm like, oh, bullshit. Dude to play Victor Bueno. Jack Warner. The motherfucking Bob, the director. All Bob Aldrich. All that. I said, well, goddamn. Finally, the finality of it all. When, you know, they were doing the memorandum and they showed Joan Crawford and they had all of our guest stars. We had our Joan Blondell. We had Olivia de Havilland standing there. Victor Bueno was standing there. And they're all standing watching the memorandum. And they're showing the pictures and they show Joan Crawford. Two seconds. 50 years in Hollywood, she got two seconds. And Betty Davis says that's all any of us is going to get. To be fair, now, if you were like the big time Hollywood legend, now they'll do a whole section dedicated to you. Now. But back then, like, they really treated these women and these entertainers like they was disposable like that. And it's sad. You have to understand. And I'm going to wrap it up. You have to understand, in this day and age for millennials, and I guess I'm classified by gen classified as Generation X, but I'm only two years off. What they classify as millennials is 1980 to 2005 born. 1980, whatever. But after 1980. We are in the age that ain't nobody doing nothing for 50 years no more. In any career. I don't care if you're a college professor. I don't care if you... Or a lab technician like I am. I don't care if you a politician. The days of being able to have a career doing anything for 50 years is gone. So you really take into consideration. Like yes, it's, it's a high paying job. It's a glamorous life. But doing anything for 50 years deserves to be commended. Point blank. Period. That's a lot. Even if you are an actor or somebody that is a lot of variety in your work and you're not necessarily doing the same thing every day. Doing anything for 50 years is hard. That shit's just crazy. But they are both screen legends. I would implore all of you if you've never seen any of their films. I hope that this does spark you to watch other of their films, not just Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, even though, watch that, I just recently watched it. Fucking amazing. But, their earlier work, these women were masters of their class. Like, yes, Betty Davis was like the Meryl Streep of her day, but Joan Crawford was like the, let me think of who I could think of. See, it's so weird. It, 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 it's even hard to say that now because now, you know, TV used to be like a slap in the face if you was a movie star. Like now we got movie stars doing TV all the time because now it is more about the work. It is more about the work and television has come such a long way where there's such, obviously, Jessica Lange, Susan Sarandon are fucking movie stars. You see what they just fucking did. Um... I would probably say the closest person to Joan Crawford probably was in modern day, let's say, I'm trying to think of somebody that's like a movie star. Okay, Channing Tatum. I'm sorry, I can't think of a woman right now. But let's say Channing Tatum, like, his acting is solid enough. It doesn't take you out of the film. But you just can't take your eyes off of him if he's in the movie because he's just so fucking gorgeous. I can't think of a woman like that right now because it ain't got much easier for fucking women in Hollywood. In fact, they had better shit for women back then now than they do now. I was going to say Megan Fox, but Megan Fox ain't never been good. She just hot. Sorry about it. But anyway, I do want to thank all of you 
for joining me for this season of Feud. Next season, we got Charles and Diana, so I guess I'm about to have to get my Fascinator and Glove game up. Because I'm going to miss my old Hollywood boudoir shit, y'all. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. <sighs> but this was fantastic, so thank you for watching me. Um, also, if you are not a pink lady or a T-bird, feel free to become one by clicking on the pink circle um, with the little Sailor Moon character in it. You can also feel free to check out my Patreon. Once again, I did tell y'all my birthday is in two weeks. It's May 5th, so if you feel like getting a bitch a birthday gift, feel free to donate a dollar for a year. It's only $12. I'm sure you waste that. I know I do. Um, and finally, check out some other videos. So thank you so much for watching. This is...